Attention! Is Nicolas Maduro the new Pablo Escobar? Discover the alarm of world leaders in a scandalous and forceful attack against the Venezuelan regime. Former Colombian President Andres Pastrana has stirred waves of controversy by comparing the Venezuelan dictator Nicolas Maduro to the infamous drug lord Pablo Escobar and Diosdado Cabello to the ruthless Chapo Guzman. During the ninth presidential dialogue, Pastrana did not hold back in highlighting the severe crisis in Venezuela, describing it as a dictatorship supported by organized crime and drug trafficking. The former president's words have resonated throughout Latin America, leaving no one indifferent. But how accurate is this comparison? Is Venezuela really being run by criminals on par with the most dangerous drug traffickers in history? And most importantly, what are the implications of these harsh statements for the future of the region? In this article, we break down every aspect of this explosive verbal attack, which has caused a stir in political circles and challenges those who still remain silent about the atrocities of Maduro's regime. The Ninth Presidential Dialogue, an event marked by controversy. The Ninth Presidential Dialogue, a summit of world leaders and former presidents, focused on the democratic decline in Venezuela and its global repercussions. Among the attendees were prominent international figures, including former presidents of Mexico, Spain, and Costa Rica. However, it was Andres Pastrana who captured everyone's attention by launching an unusually harsh attack on the Chavez regime. Pastrana didn't mince words. His statements ignited the debate and made it clear that, in his opinion, Maduro's regime is nothing more than a tyranny backed by drug trafficking. Maduro is the new Pablo Escobar and Diosdado Cabello is the new Chapo Guzman, declared Pastrana, triggering a media storm of colossal proportions. According to the former president, the Chavez regime has stripped the Venezuelan people of their popular will, and if they continue down this path, they will end up like the feared drug lords who once terrorized Colombia and Mexico. Why did Pastrana compare Maduro to Pablo Escobar? The comparison of Maduro to Escobar is neither accidental nor an exaggeration. Pablo Escobar, known for leading one of the most brutal drug cartels in the world, left a legacy of violence and corruption in Colombia. According to Pastrana, Nicolas Maduro is not far from following the same path, protected by drug trafficking and the oppression of his own people. Like Escobar, Maduro seems to be shielded by an empire of terror, using violence, fear and repression as his main tools to remain in power. And Diosdado Cabello for Pastrana plays a role similar to that of Joaquin El Chapo Guzman, a second-in-command, equally lethal, responsible for ensuring that opponents of the regime disappear or are imprisoned, as has happened with many political and civil leaders in Venezuela. Pastrana warned that if Maduro and Cabello continue on this path, they could end up like Escobar and Chapo, fallen and condemned for their crimes. But who will dare to put an end to this dictatorship? The international community, accomplice to crime? One of the most forceful points in Pastrana's speech was the direct accusation against the international community. According to the former president, if immediate measures are not taken against Maduro's regime, the International Criminal Court and other international bodies will be condoning the crimes committed in Venezuela. The warning is not just for Venezuela. Pastrana called on all countries in the region, accusing them of indifference to the crisis. Passivity, according to Pastrana, is the true culprit behind Maduro's continued rule with an iron fist, violating human rights and keeping the country in an unprecedented economic and social crisis. Maria Corina Machado, a target of the regime Pastrana, didn't just criticize Maduro and Cabello, but also warned of the imminent danger facing Maria Corina Machado, a Venezuelan opposition leader. According to the former Colombian president, the recent military restructuring in Venezuela has a single objective, the capture of Maria Corina. Diosdado Cabello has been clear, he's coming for her, Pastrana asserted, stressing that Machado's capture could spell the total collapse of the opposition in Venezuela. This also raises alarms about the future of opposition leaders in a country where the regime has shown its willingness to do whatever it takes to remain in power. Criticism of Gustavo Petro An ally of Maduro Pastrana's statements were not limited to Venezuela. The former Colombian president also fired a venomous dart at the current president of Colombia, 
Gustavo Petro, whom he accused of being an accomplice to Maduro's regime. According to Pastrana, Petro is delaying the recognition of Edmundo Gonzalez as the true winner of the Venezuelan elections, while secretly forging an alliance with drug traffickers and armed groups like the FARC and the ELN. Petro is nothing more than Maduro's foreign minister, Pastrana declared firmly, suggesting that Colombia's current president is collaborating with the Chavez regime to protect the interests of guerrillas and drug cartels in the region. These statements are a direct blow to the credibility of Petro's government, which has already faced criticism for its ambiguous stance on the Venezuelan crisis. What's next for Venezuela? The future in sight. The outlook for Venezuela is bleak. If the international community doesn't act soon, the country will likely sink further into the abyss of dictatorship and organized crime. The question that remains is, who will be responsible for putting an end to this tyranny? Pastrana's words have sparked a debate about the need for more decisive intervention by democratic countries. However, solutions seem far off, and in the meantime, the Venezuelan people continue to suffer the consequences of an oppressive regime that shows no signs of weakening. Andres Pastrana's harsh statements should not be taken lightly. Comparing Maduro to Escobar and Cabello to Chapo Guzman reflects the desperation and urgency felt by the international community in response to the crisis in Venezuela. If action is not taken soon, the future of the country will remain in the hands of a regime that seems unstoppable. One of the most striking aspects of Pastrana's conclusions is his urgent call for the International Criminal Court ICC, to take drastic measures against Maduro's regime. If the international community remains a passive observer, it will not only allow Venezuela to continue to sink into chaos, but will also send a message to other authoritarian regimes. Impunity prevails. For Pastrana, the inaction of bodies like the ICC is equivalent to being complicit in the crimes committed by Maduro's regime, which reflects a lack of political and moral will from democratic countries to intervene in the conflict. This statement poses a moral dilemma for governments in the region and around the world. Venezuela is not only in the midst of an economic, political and social crisis, but also a total collapse of its democratic institutions. This is not just a country in crisis. It's a case study of how organized crime can hijack an entire state, with catastrophic consequences for its citizens and the stability of the region. What do you think of Andres Pastrana's statements? Do you believe the international community should intervene in Venezuela? We want to hear your opinion. Leave your comments below and join the conversation. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel, activate the notification bell so you don't miss any updates, and share this video with your friends. Together, we can make a difference and fight for the freedom of Venezuela. See you in the next video.